the title basically is uh, research on the site and war research, building research. And in this context, uh, we are going to talk about, I'm going to talk about challenges. This is uh, what I suggested. Uh, I studied archaeology and cons building construction. Earlier, I dealt with archaeology. And for about five years, I've been dealing with uh, building research. Most recently, for, a, for, a, for quite many years, I, would, I wanted to have an overview of the profession as for uh, uh, as for the situation and condition, methodology, uh, and everything internationally in our profession, and I would like to show it at home as well. In this lecture or presentation uh, connected to challenges, I would like to actualize the issue from the point of view of uh, monument protection, because we we tr usually tend to uh, deal only with material, material things, but it is also the technology uh, and also the legal part has to be included. This condition, this uh, the area of this condition is about in di this direction, and I would like to uh, put light on where we humans are in this process. In the previous lectures, well, the previous lectures uh, helped a lot uh, with this issue. There have been three lectures which uh, have seriously dealt with this, these questions about the traumas that we have uh, behind us, where we, where we people are in this whole story, and what uh, contexts uh, build up uh, our relationship to the material reality, and how we can imagine to continue it. So here is a short introduction to my lecture. The historical monument cannot be uh, interpreted on its own. It's not just a building or a ruin, but it is part, it always part of a bigger context where the people are involved as well, the community. And we also have to talk about the institutions who represent this community. This is uh, the government. So without the state, it cannot be interpreted. So we cannot get rid of the state just simply like that. Uh, there are various relationships between the people. For example, the memory is that connects the people. There are documents which we make about these uh, uh, cultural heritage elements. And we have different communities. And all these things that are in the common space, a discussion was formed where we, uh, where we concentrate on the description of cultural heritage and how we have to deal with cultural heritage and how we have to present it. And also we create and establish forums so that we can understand uh, the issues. The previous lecturer, Denek Vaha, uh, showed you this triangle. And this is what I have here is something like similar to this triangle. So we have to uh, approach the reality, which consists of three bigger elements. This is the material reality, how we uh, write or make documents of these things. And this is the and the third part is the community. How we preserve uh, our memories about these uh, monuments, and also how we think about these uh, uh, monuments. 
the buildings and also the documents uh, are collected. We set up collections. Uh, well, with the buildings, of course, it is just uh, a matter of words. So we cannot collect the buildings into one place. This is just part of the whole thing. This is about the whole built heritage. This collection is also dealt with as they were a collection of documents and or, or objects. At the same time, we have or set up established institutions which store these collections and also can pass on uh, the, uh, the collections if we want to deal with those collections. In this relationship, we can we have to interpret every single monument, material, heritage, what the reality of them are. And one more thing to the previous three notions. The historical monuments, material elements, the reality of them uh, exists on three different levels. On, on the one hand, in our thoughts, then in the de descriptions, in the documents, and also in the reality. And these three are in balance, in very strong balance. And we cannot say that one can exist without the other because they complete each other. Without one, without the others, cannot be interpreted. At the same time, we have to measure if one of them is lost out of the three, but if we have the, three, the two remaining elements, if we deal with a monument or a heritage that we have to deal with, we have to uh, evaluate the different dimensions of the heritage. What moves us? Basically, it is not just following the rules. This common heritage uh, has a multicolor community in it. This variety can be uh, lived as if it is our own. And, and what motivates us is not the rules, but, but the intention. Here are, here are the keywords that I collected for, for those of those who deal with historical monuments. Innovation is a very strong part of our activity. The state, uh, which I showed or symbolized with a building in this picture, so the state helps the community to to show how the communities could work together and how, what they could what they could do for the buildings and those are the bridges that show uh, the connections as a designated connecting point they they might seem barriers maybe the tools are but we have to adapt to them and we have to find uh, the connecting points which we want to sustain different processes, laws, legal regulations. Another challenge is that the documents and the processes sometimes uh, we, ha we seem to be, we humans seem to be disappearing. And basically, what we can see is the documents that go from one place to the other. And we have the feeling that the state strategy is that it is kind of an escaping route for the state, uh, that they cover the whole thing with uh, documents and processes. And in between, uh, they cannot see the people, and we cannot see ourselves either. The challenge is a possibility, 
it is the digitalization. Almost every document appears in digital form on the internet. This is a huge information blower. And uh, one of the most important, uh, most interesting things is that the old documents are dig digitalized as well and can be made public. This is one profit of digitalization that we can make them digitalized. The challenge is that our new documents uh, should be or have to be made useful for the public. In these workshops, in these communities, in the different institutions, we can start a discussion and create the notions or create a framework of our profession which can be just as effective as, as it could mean as a big wave, just like it is now with the old documents which help us today. Another big challenge is that human connections are also digitalized in a way. In the past one and a half years, uh, we have lived through this critically. Personal connections uh, were decreased and uh, connections were made on the internet. Can we sustain the discussions under these conditions? Can we develop how we deal with uh, heritage, how we can extend the frameworks of our work, uh, how it is uh, demanded by the technological development. Uh, I would like to talk about documents that uh, we make about material uh, memories or monuments. Uh, I gave it a title that is experience and uh, forwarding. Also, the, uh, the figures on the right will illustrate what I'm talking about. A public demand has formed to pass on the experience that we have and share it with others. And different document forms have been made. So we make it for others possible to live through the experience that we went, we've been through. To a certain extent, it has to be simplified and we have to concentrate on certain things. So I'm indicating how uh, we can go from the abstract to the concrete. When I thought it over, I had to face that the most traditional documents are uh, drawings and texts because they consist uh, the most of the interpretation. The, the most frequent documents are or might not contain any interpretation because there is no information with them. So we use the complex of the, all these things when we document a building and we do our research based on it. If we want to uh, make documents available for others, it can be something that they can read and something that they that is available. This is also a challenge because in the internet age, uh, it means that we have to make internet databases. This is an example. This photo is an example. If it 
if it is shown to anyone, maybe we don't know anything about it. So we, uh, in our database, has to be written what it can be seen or what can be seen in the fo photo. This this comes from the photo uh, database. You can see that who donated who donated the photo. He's the one who made it available and he's the one who digitalized it. Going on. Other image creations is laser, uh, laser scanning or 3D photography. Uh, this is parallel with photos, of course. I don't want to speak much about it. I'm putting it here because the historic England uh, has got separated from the original organization, and this uh, is available on the internet. I learned 3D photography from this publication. Laser scanning uh, is also very well described in this publication. Another important technology that we use today is photo digital photogrammetric. I'm offering you this publication because it very well, uh, everything is very well described in it. And uh, moving picture is also sort of uh, extends. It is a very popular uh, way of passing on information. There is a huge offer on the internet. It is a really big development where a lot of new data uh, becomes available. It is a big step ahead. Professional uh, lectures TV programs about the topic and different series are available. I highlighted two of, of two of the, my favorite ones. The, one of them is Grand Design. Uh, how to? It is about old buildings, how they are used today. It is very amusing, but also you can learn a lot from it. And the other one is it's a time team series also in also from England. It was on uh, between 1994 and 2014. It is a it is about archaeology, but it was absolutely a new thing. And all parts of the series are available on the internet. Public education museums also publish uh, very good videos, short films, or people who make films or videos about buildings which, which were neglected or abandoned. They are just average people who are interested in this thing, and uh, they also they themselves also want to appear in these in these films. Th these are also documentations and archives. Documents from the archives are also published. This is also an important source for our work. I don't want to speak much about this drawing on the left. Today, the built heritage uh, is uh, done with the laser scanning and photogrammetry. These are automatized uh, data reception. Uh, they record the colors, the shapes, the forms, and out of it a drawing has to be made. This became rather difficult. Those who tried it know that it is very difficult to create. Uh, drawings or 3D drawings to make. 
out of these data. There is a big difference between planning and between the research or evaluation survey of the existing buildings. So they, the people want to uh, change from 2D to 3D. Uh, the tools have to be improved. With the building survey, it is uh, we are in a more difficult situation because Uh, they only exist in a big model space. They just float in the big model space. And it is difficult to find unified framework for this work in the digital model world. This is a work of my own. That was a survey of a church in Transylvania. Laser scanning is parallel with photography. The point cloud, if you, if you set the point cloud, then you can create a drawing or a picture or an image which is very much similar to a photo. So basically, it, it also means a 3D image. Uh, to treat it as a model substance, it is not less, it doesn't mean less than uh, going there in person and taking photos of the existing building. And the document which uh, interprets best uh, the situation is the text. It is the most useful uh, thing because it helps thinking it is also my experience that if I describe a building in a text from the beginning to the end, which we have to deal with, which the survey is aimed at, you start it from the settlement from outside and you then you go into the building inside so it needs an overview and when you describe it then eventually you can say that I will become a expert of this particular building because I will see all the issues which were raised while doing the survey of course uh, it is also parallel with the drawing There is uh, applied research, basically, that I'm talking about in connection with historical monuments uh, and in connection with the interventions and about documentation. We make uh, uh, local, that is, uh, research on the, on the place, and it is a big challenge for us. Uh, applied research has to follow the criteria of scientific research. There have to be resources which we have to present and we have to make it available for those who want to or need experience about that, experience and knowledge about that. Our interpretations have to be separated from the data and this reference back will be available for everybody. So what are our uh, consequences, where they come from? It has to be available and understandable for the people. And we have to show them, have to make them understood by showing the data, by showing the sources as well, so that they can also criticize uh, the result. In the we are talking about applied research. But the first thing is uh, raising the question. Uh, 
and also uh, the interest of the of the owner and interest of the public from the interpretations uh, concerning applied research the given situation uh, in the given situation the the end result have to be passed on briefly i run through two areas one of them is the concrete interventions connected to the research and also the other thing is uh, a local research uh, via which uh, the building will be declared protected short historical look back what sort of schools there are all over Europe the oldest it also means a a time process and also includes uh, differences in geographical locations these research schools if we go back to the oldest one uh, is the textual description which is completed by photographs or drawings the present practice of it can be clearly found in England there is this school it is very strong in England there. Building research or evaluation has a st strong uh, research school too. And then war research is a very specifically Hungarian notion uh, don't even try to find this word in foreign languages. This is a Hungarian notion, uh, and it is not an accident because uh, under the Hungarian conditions, uh, this uh, research school has formed in Hungary only. They cannot be interpreted on their own, these methods, I mean. They are completed with uh, local research as well and uh, research is about the historical documents and data as well. Why are there differences? If you consider Europe, then uh, the historical buildings that remain for us are so much different. They come from so much different periods. What are the differences? What are the different buildings that you can find in the different countries? These big differences will appear in the research work as well. They are just unavoidable. Uh, in Hungary, you won't find timbered houses, which you can see in the photos now, but they will be found in Germany and in England too. There, uh, these timbered houses uh, consist the most significant part of historical buildings, old buildings. It, it is very, it can very often seen on the facade, and it shows such an obvious structural element of the building, which the understanding of which, and the do without the documentation, without uh, these things, we cannot get ahead. This is the first thing that we have to understand that is the understanding, uh, the visible parts. And it is also, it, it, it also refers to the stone structures, the carved stone parts. These structural elements, if we don't understand these structural elements, then uh, we don't, it is not worth trying to understand the basic questions either. We concentrate on observation. We concentrate our research work, our observation. There are schools 
uh, also about this, as it uh, is characteristic in Western Europe, which come from, which originate from these building types. Uh, the other type is uh, the brick buildings in Northwest. It is they are characteristic. This is a German example where you can clearly see that this church, the western facade of this church, how the different phases follow one another. After the Roman times, uh, then a Gothic window was put into it, and then another extension can also be seen or observed. Without the documentation and description of it, or what I'm saying is that they are so important for our work, for the research of the buildings, that there is a significant stress on it. So one example from Historic England, on their homepage, uh, research documentation is available. Many of them are available. I'm offering you to get to know this kind of uh, research methodology. There, there is a detailed photo documentation of these buildings. Here you can see a stucco ceiling, and above it in the, in the attic, the earlier arches can be seen. When you go into the attic, you, you don't even have to do much to, uh, to uncover it because you can see it. And uh, another school, is building survey, especially the methodology results of it. Uh, it has a very strong coherent approach. It is a very thoroughful research and survey of buildings. But it also originates from the timbered houses. from the Middle Ages. Uh, the minor differences in the directions and in the levels in the cross -cut, they have so much information that if you just map these differences and the construction, then you will get a absolutely different view of the whole of the building. They also do research. This is the work of a German researcher, a drawing, uh, together with periodization. Also, the result of the research uh, is shown. End war research just briefly about it. Last year there was a conference about it in Hungary. It is available, I mean, the study of it available on the internet. In this, Hungarian and Transylvanian examples can be shown with a historical uh, view on the, on the past. To, to get, uh, and how they interdependent on, uh, meth uh, on uh, the different methods of uh, sciences. It became significant in Hungary because due to our history, we are characterized that our medieval buildings uh, remained for us strongly or very seriously uh, reconstructed. If you want to get to know about it, we can only know it so uh, that we survey uh, the buildings below, that is below uh, the, at the wall level. And it doesn't only concern the buildings which were uh, rebuilt after the Turkish times, but also after the wars, world wars. A methodology was formed 
and the name became uh, well known, that is Vol Research. So we tried to find the traces of earlier periods by researching the walls themselves. It doesn't only concentrate on one point, but it is a program and it extends on the whole of the building. The same methodology was washed away by time in the past one of, uh, 10 or 20 years because there is no strong institution which has availability to these buildings and which would have or which would maintain a team of professionals who could continue the research. So, so it is done in a scattered way, for example, in castles, mansions, in the, in the framework of castles castle programs, but it is going on beyond the borders, the present borders of Hungary as well. They also took over uh, this example. This uh, is from Transylvania. So about all research, I can say that to a certain extent, it is considered as uh, part of the past because uh, they were significant in the 1990s. Uh, the framework where the researchers can do uh, decreased. So what are the directions that where we can uh, where we can get ahead or where we can achieve results as war researchers uh, researching on the on the place on the concrete place a Dutch publication is uh, where it gives us the guidelines uh, which were which was published in 2009. It is also available on the internet. It is an overview which I think uh, approaches best this task. And in Europe, there have already been published some other uh, publications of the kind, but to me, this is the most efficient one. The most important point is that both with asking the questions and both with and also with uh, passing on uh, the data and the information, there is also a very strong cooperation between the authorities and also with the society. If this connection is not realized, then uh, then an outsider will uh, consider this work without any particular use. How we have to make all the participants aware about, our, about the research and about our results as well. We have to obviously separate what what the, uh, the facts are, what are our interpretations, and connect it to the concrete application, what is the evaluation, or what is the notion of evaluation which appears in this publication. It appears all over the world. That is the notion of significance as uh, the primary result of the research. It should define the significance the, uh, of the object and of its various parts.
considering raising the question, I copied one part of this publication. The, this is the research plan. In a very detailed way, it has to be discovered uh, in a quick circle what the basic data of the building are. And uh, raising the questions has to be defined by very serious uh, points. And the, it has to be made in a cooperation between the owner, the authority, and the researcher. Uh, the owner has to understand that he can present uh, the research plan. And the process uh, and the tools of research are uh, they will concentrate on the task, on the different parts that are affected, And it has to be about the methods of the research and the extension of the research. In this Dutch publication, it is also presented that it's a breakthrough uh, in the field of building research. So about the significance, there has to be a very well worked out part in the publication. This is the third step of, of this figure. This is separated from the results. So it's not just that I state uh, the, the age of the, of the building, and I cannot say right away that it is an old building, so it is valuable. I have to give an evaluation which consists my impressions about the different parts, about the significance of the different parts of the building. This is obvious that it is a very efficient base for the discussions, this part of the work. When only the periodization is given, out, given through, then it is just pushed uh, to and back between the users. But if uh, we tell our opinion, then uh, a lot stronger basis appears for the discussions and the, and the cooperation and the discussion will be formed into which the different parties are involved. And there is also a proposal which is separated from the rest of the work. They don't say that there has to be a proposal. Maybe the owner won't. This is an optional part of the work. The significance and telling are imp important. It is important significant as well. In the proposal, there have to be drawings of course, as well. It consists of three steps. This sort of overview means some sort of uh, simplification, but it adds a lot uh, to how we can pass on the results. So last year, there was a new law about the new uh, legalization of uh, declaring something a protected building. Also, uh, the result of the local research has to be the definition of the significance of the building. And the notion that the separated uh, certain elements, significant elements, 
should be put into the law, which is a good direction. This is still a rigid form of our knowledge about the building, and I think, and also my colleagues say, that it is a wrong direction because it excludes the ne necessary Uh, changes which mean the significance of the research. The research is always overwrite the earlier researches, and this is also my experience, and I collected a few spectacular examples which I think I could show you uh, from the past three years. And they illustrate to what extent uh, the definition of a given monument changed in the past year. This is a mentioned building, which was defined as eclectic. Probably they couldn't have a look. Uh, uh, during the research on the site, it turned out that it is a late Baroque. They have, it has uh, late Baroque bars on the windows and this uh, coat of arms can be connected to a absolutely different family than the building was connected to earlier. And out of the whole thing, uh, we found out when the building was really built. If we had named it as a eclectic mansion building, we uh, would would have to reach into this legal legal regulation quite deep. This is a church in Tolna County. In the 2000, this little tower. So at that time, they wrote that it was built probably in 1789, but during the research, it turned out it is a church of Gothic uh, church. And this is a locally protected house in Vats. This is an eclectic uh, house protected, but without any particular thing. And in the back part of it, you find uh, doors like that baro with Baroque uh, openings. So it comes from the 18th century. That is the back part of the building comes from the 18th century Baroque times. So the so the law treats these things very rigidly. So I think I have run out of time. So I'm not going to into anything else. So the conclusion to me is that the discussion, our no system of notions, and uh, to to support, to sustain uh, our work, it is important. That is, the state, uh, the participant, participation of the state is very important. So we have to make proposals which the local community can make use of. We don't have an institution to publish publications like that. And the professional uh, communities must have conversations, discussions about it to improve methodology and to pass on our knowledge that we, uh, we have achieved. The, the using AI and digitalization looks a very important uh, developing uh, direction, 
and I would like to emphasize that natural intelligence should be developed, not the artificial intelligence. This is knowledge, the dissemination of knowledge and how we have to pass on knowledge. This is important. Without this field, We cannot do our work. Thank you very much for your attention.